Religion can tend to depict Jesus as a two-dimensional person. Misan sinasabi lang nila, tao lang siya. May nagsasabi naman, ah, spirit lang siya. And one reason for this could be a fragmented reading of Scripture. Bihira natin binabasa in a panoramic way, in a very clear and uh, um, arresting narrative. Ang atin ngayong pagtingin sa Panginoon, ang pag-aaral natin, pinamagitan natin, Jesus, both sides now. Dear God, we thank you for who you are in our lives. Patuloy niyo kami, Panginoong linisin at nang walang maging sagabal sa pagpapalaan niyo. We thank you, Father, that you cleanse us with the blood of your Son, Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, to now teach us, hold us, heal us. Nawa yung mga salita niyo maging lakas namin, gamot, pagkain, liwanag, inspirasyon. At ang dalangin namin, lalo namin makilalang yung anak na si Jesus at mapalapit kami sa Kanya. We reject and rebuke any works of evil, any lies and falsehood, and any temptation for our minds to drift away from your topic, O God. So we ask you to be our speaker, sit on your throne of power, dispense blessings, heal us, empower us, lift up your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving and gratitude. Amen. Both sides now. Sinimula natin nung nakaraan ang pagbabasa ng Book of John. At dito kung saan tayo dali ng author, doon tayo pupunta at napakahalaga na makita natin the Lord Jesus Christ in a very theologicalized way. John is the most theological of all the Gospels at napaka-developed yung theology sa Gospel na ito. Sa nakaraan nating pagbasa, nakita natin that the writer presents and introduces Jesus as pre-existent, as divine, as agent of creation, as Lamb of God, but sadly, unknown to many. Today, we look at chapter 2. I'll be reading from the contemporary English version, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at a wedding feast in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited and were there. When the wine was all gone, Mary said to Jesus, they have no more wine, or they don't have any more wine. So here we see Mary and her family being responsible for hosting. Otherwise, she would not make a big problem out of this shortage. Sila marahil ay host, kamag-anak nila ang lalaki na nag-host, basta sila ay bahagi noong merong pananagutan. And there was a concern here, there was no more wine. It was a social nightmare. Kahiyaan na to, fun would be abruptly ended, mapipintasan yung host. But why go to the Son of God, the King of Kings, agent of creation, and bother Him with such a mundane matter as nauubos na yung wine? John 2, verse 4. Jesus replied, Mother, my time hasn't yet come. You must not tell me what to do. So Jesus did not think the occasion was timely. Whatever He meant were, with my time has not yet come, sinasabi lang niya, hindi ko pa oras para gawin yung Sila suggest mo na gawin ko. Because Mary was actually suggesting a miracle. They have no more wine. Kung hindi pa ba naman miracle yun, wala ka naman tayo para bumili o magpa-deliver, hindi pa uso nun yun. So anong hinihingi niya? Sabi niya, my time has not yet come. And he puts Mary in the correct frame as far as timing was concerned. There was a certain timing to his ministry and for him, it has not come yet. Verse 5, Mary then said to the servants, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. So, hindi niya pinansin na sinabihan siya na, hindi ko pa oras. Sabi niya, kung anong ipagawa sa inyo, gawin niyo basta. Sabi ng nanay sa mga katulong. So, meron talaga siyang authority over the house help. Mga maring very close relative nila itong uh, ikinasal na ito, kaya sila pwede mag-utos sa mga katulong. And Mary expects Jesus to do something anyway. What would Jesus do? facing such a request from his mother with this social problem that was about to erupt and then the gravity of the situation and the nobility of his mission on earth. Paano niya ibabalance yan? John 2, 6 to 10. At the feast, there were six stone water jars that were used by the people for washing themselves in the way that the religion said they must. Each jar held about 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants to fill them to the top with water. 
Then after the jars had been filled, he said, Now take some water and give it to the man in charge of the feast. The servants did as Jesus told them, and the man in charge drank some of the water that had now turned into wine. He did not know where the wine had come from, but the servants did. He called the bridegroom over and said, The best wine is always served first. Then after the guests have had plenty, the other wine is served. But you have kept the best until last. So, here we see Jesus doing his first recorded miracle, turning water into wine. You think it might be making a lame man walk, o kaya bibigyan niya ng paningin yung bulag, o kaya ay paparosahan ng mga makasalanan, bibigyan ng award ng mga banal, etc., etc. But here, Jesus turns water into wine. And the first to witness Jesus doing a miracle, yung unang nakasaksi at nakapagpatunay, servants. Not Mary, not the disciples, not the priests, not the religious leaders, not the Bible scholars, not even the guests, but the servants. Plus, the miracle happened not in Jerusalem, not in the temple, not in any synagogue at all. Everything that you would not expect to happen was happening. Meron ba namang ganun? Pre-existent Son of God, Eternal King of Kings, would come to earth, tapos ang unang miracle lang is to turn water into wine in a small rural village, in a small gathering of simple people. Surely you know that this is a statement. There's a statement being made. A new paradigm, a new way of thinking, a new way of life. What basic truth surfaces here? Those who work with Jesus see and know Jesus. Those who work with Jesus are the first to know Jesus. Yung mga katulong ang nabigyan ng karangalan na unang makasaksi at makapagpatunay sa miraculous powers ng Panginoon kasi sila yung mga katulong. The best way to know Jesus is to serve with Him. At yung mga naglilingkod kasama ng Panginoon, tumutugtog ka, umaawit ka, presider ka, speaker ka, teacher ka, we serve with the Lord. We don't really serve the Lord. We serve the people and God counts us as serving Him. And when you serve with the Lord, ang unang mo dapat napapala, nakikilala mo si Lord. Hindi yung na-stress ka, hindi yung yumayabang ka, o kaya ay sobra ka nagiging busy, nakakalimutan mo, na ang unang mong dapat privilege is to get to know the master of all the servants, the chief servant himself who came to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Pag serve ka ng serve sa Panginoon tapos hindi mo naman siya nakikilala ng lubusan, lugi ka. Kailangan ikaw yung unang-unang nakakasaksi ng pagkilos niya. At marami na naglilingkod in the context of the church see that. Kulang yung fund, kulang yung gamit, merong ganitong uh, um, mga kulang na supply pero nakita mo biglang napupuno, biglang umaandar yung sistema and you see that God is at work. But those who just come and sit pretty and expect to be served and expect to be uh, uh, hosted and entertained, don't see these things. Merong advantage talaga pag nasa kitchen ka, malapit ka sa cook. Now, 11 to 12, this was Jesus' first miracle and He did it in the village of Cana in Galilee. There Jesus showed His glory and His disciples put their faith in Him. After this, He went with His mother, His brothers, and His disciples to the town of Capernaum where they had stayed for a few days. So we see Jesus who is sociable. Hindi siya parang hermit na nakahiwalay sa mga tao at nagpapakabanal. A very normal person who was also family-centered. By this time, many scholars think that Joseph was already dead. Kaya wala siya sa mga kwento. But the mother, the brothers, the family, and the disciples were all around. And we see that he attended a feast. An activity that many Christians now would not want to do. Ha? Kasalan lang. Ha? Party? Ha? Social event? Naku, hindi ba nalihan? But you see that the Lord was in a party. He was approachable. He acceded to his mother's request. 
Siya na nagsabi, hindi pa niya oras, pero di ba ginawa din naman niya? What do we see here? That Jesus is accommodating. Hindi katulad ng maraming religious leaders, mas mahigpit pa kay Jesus. Mas hindi magbibigay, mas, 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 hindi sila, mas rigid pa. The need for wine was not frivolous nor needless for Him. Iyon yung mga iba krasyano ngayon, ha, wine, hindi ka dapat uminom niyan. Hindi lalo hindi sila magmimirakel. Di ba? Ang liit-liit na bagay naman yan, ang babaw-babaw, paghihimalaan pa ng anak ng Diyos. But what kind of Jesus do we see? He did not trivialize the need of the moment. He did not let the host lose face. Although in matters of the universe, in matters of eternity, ano na ba naman yung value nung iniligtas mo sa kahihiyan yung isang maliit na party at nagproduce ka ng wine? So nakikita natin sa Panginoong Yesus, walang maliit. Pag malaki sa'yo yun, pag importante sa'yo yun, pag mahalaga yun sa'yo, pinapahalagahan din niya. Madalas hindi tayo ganyan. Takot yung kapatid mo sa ipis. Sabi mo, ipis lang natatakot ka. Eh, takot siya eh. Di ba? Pag gusto ng asawa mo, pag anniversary, 12.01 pa lang ng madaling araw, maaalala mo na ang wedding anniversary nyo. Ano ba naman yan? Pinakasala na nga kita. Yampre, mahal na kita. Eh, mahal na sa kanya eh. Meron tayong isang malaki kung isang pagkukulang. Ang malaki lang sa atin, yung malaki sa atin. Yung malaki sa iba, pag hindi malaki sa atin, bali wala. But you see the example of the Lord? O importante sa inyo yung wine, hindi mag-produce tayo, hindi pa oras. Ganun ka bait. Hindi yung ano ba yan, wine lang yan. Mga worldly kayo. Di ba? Dapat kung mag-miracle tayo yung mga lahat ng sugat, gumaling bigla. Yung may katuturan. Bababa ang mga anghel. Di ba? Paparusahan lahat ang mga makasalanan. Yun ang mga relihiyoso, yun ang mga kristyano. But Christ wasn't like that. There is a very big gap between Christ and the Christians. There is a very big gap between the Christianity of the ages and the Jesus who was supposed to be the center point of that Christianity. So Jesus was so unlike many Christians who trivialize nearly everything, especially if those are worldly or earthly. Ano yung mga sakit na marami Christian? wala namang kinalaman sa salvation natin yan, hindi na mahalaga. Diba? Huwag nalang sarapan ng adobo, total naman, we're going to heaven when we die. Huwag nalang tayo maging comfortable sa buhay. Yung bali, wala na lahat. Hindi ganun si Lord. Kung tutuusin mo, ang liit-liit na bagay, wine, pag-aaksay ng parang na maging miracle, yung kaliitan nun ng statement, pag mahalaga, mahalaga sa kapwa mo, hindi yun maliit. Lalo nanay mo yun, o kapatid mo yon, o asawa mo yon, o anak mo yon, o kaibigan mo yon, o empleyado mo yon, kumahalaga sa kanya, pahalagahan mo. Kasi ang kabutihan natin sa kapwa, yun ang paglilingkod sa Diyos na hinahanap niya. Sabi niya, whatever you do to the least, no? to the least of this, and to the least of this least people's concerns, sabi niyang Panginoon, you do it to me. Ang totoo, wala naman talaga maliit. Kung naliliitan ka halimbawa sa isang butil ng bigas, kung langgam ka, will you say that? It's only a matter of perspective. Nalalaking ka halimbawa sa isang building, subukan mong tingnan yung planeta, yung earth, from afar. And the building will not even be visible. It's so small. So what is small, what is big, it is the value you attach to it. So kung mahalaga sa'yo ang isang tao, kahit yung maliit na bagay sa'yo, pero mahalaga sa kanya, mamalakihin mo. Kasi yun ang value. Jesus that we see here is considerate and solicitous. He did not trivialize what was important to others. A provider of comfort, even of pleasure and happiness. Siyempre nga namang kasalan eh. Minsan lang naman mangyari sa buhay ng isang mag-asawa. Sayang naman kung dahil lang naubos yung wine, eh biglang mag-uwi na at hindi nag-climax yung kaligayahan. At hindi lang yun ha. You think ang Panginoon yan, mag- oh, sige gusto niya ng wine, nag-wine tapos lasang suka. No. His wine is superior. Sabi nung taga-taste ng wine bago iserve, inakbayan niya siguro yung groom, mali ka lang dito. Galing mo talaga ha. Iba ka. 
Bakit po? Yung iba, yung masarap na wine, sineserve sa una eh. Pag nabusog na at medyo nalibang na yung mga umiinom, hindi na nila maintindihan kung quality pa yung darating. Ang ilalabas na nila yung second class. Pero ikaw ah, kakaiba ka. Yung first class mo, panghuli. Nagulat siguro yung host kasi wala naman siya kamalay-malay. Kung ano yung nagaganap. Pero nakinabang siya at saka yung mga tao. The wine of Jesus is superior, is excellent, is the best. What does the Lord teach us? Kaya magpapalakad ka ng bundok, hahawi ka ng dagat, o gagawa ka ng wine, dapat best. Whatever your hands find to do, sabi ng Bible, do it as unto the Lord. Kung sasabing wine lang naman yan, bisyo lang nila yan. Kahit ano na lang pwede. The best. And we know that uh, the Lord is very good at small things. Like His yoke is easy. Sabi sa Bible, His burden is light. Si Lord, napakasarap kasama. Hindi mabusisi. Hindi siya sobrang espiritual na babaliwalain na niya yung kailangan mo ngayon na material na bagay. At pag sumama ka sa kanya, kahit mahirap yung trabaho, magaan sa loob. Sabi niya, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come to me, all of you who are tired and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I'll give you peace that this world does not give. So ang kong binibigyan ng Panginoon na eh, pahinga, kapayapaan, katahimikan, kasiyahan, yun ba talaga ang nakikita natin sa church? O pumapasok ka pa lang, sabi ng church, church oy, ang iksi-iksi ng baro mo, hindi ka bagay dito. Diba? O ang iksi ng buhok mo, o ang haba ng buhok mo, lalaki, hindi ka bagay dito. Yung lagi ka nalang kulang, lagi ka nalang sinusukat at sinusuri, the Lord was not like that. The Pharisees were like that. And now, even among many so-called Christian leaders, yun ang marami modern-day Pharisees. Wala nilang ipinamukha sa tao kundi kulang siya. Kulang ka, masama ka, baliwala yan, worldly yan. The moment is important to the Lord and you live the moment. Kung ito yung moment mo, kailangan mo ng wine, okay, let's do something so that you'll have it. Wala ka nga yung makita o oh, tulungan, bigyan ito ng paningin. O oh, nagugutom, pakainin. Napaka-thoughtful ng Panginoon ha? Nung siya ay nagturo sa isang ilang na lugar, ang dami-dami mga taong hindi naman nagbaon, sumunod na lang doon, nakinig ng nakinig, hanggang nagutom na tuloy. Sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya mga disciples, oh, ano ipapakain natin sa mga tao? Magugutom na yung mga yan. Sabi nung isang magaling na disciple, eh, paalisin na po natin sila at kanya-kanya na lang ng bilihan. It will take more than six months wages para pakainin ang mga taong ito. Pero sabi nung, no, 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 gumawa tayo ng paraan. Kung iba yun, di bahali na tayong magutom. Ang dami-daming nakakadala na activities ng churches kasi yung pala, fasting. Halos wala ka palang makain, no? Hindi na inintindi kung maginhawa ka ba or not. Magkakam, pero my goodness, it's so uncomfortable. Nakakadala tuloy sa iba. Sa sabi na iba, worldly ka. Carry your cross. Hindi si tayo nagkakarya ng cross, si Lord. Kaya niya dinala for us. At pagka sinasabing carry your cross, metaphorical. Nang ibig sabihin lang yung mga talagang hindi mo pwedeng iwasan at dapat mong gawin. But the Lord likes you to have a good life. The Lord likes you well. The Lord likes you happy. Yun ang nakita nating isang mukha ng Panginoon. Pero meron pang isa. Kaya nga, both sides now eh. John 2.13, as we continue. Not long before the Jewish festival of Passover, Jesus went to Jerusalem. Another festival. Jesus was a Jew. Remember that. A practicing Jew. It would be erroneous to call Jesus Christian. Wala pang tinatawag na Christian nun. Kahit na yung mga unang generations of believers were called followers of the way. Yung makukoin pa yung terminology na yan much, much, much later. Jesus was a practicing Jew. He would go to the temple. He would attend in the synagogue. He would be attending feasts. Now, people who study Jesus must never take him out of his Jewish context. Although they don't have to imitate his Jewishness. But he must be understood from his Jewish context. 14 to 17. Because his, this Jewish context will help us understand what he would do in the succeeding verses. There he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves in the temple. He also saw money changers sitting at their tables. 
So he took some rope and made a whip. Then he chased everyone out of the temple, together with their sheep and cattle. He turned over the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. Jesus said to the people who had been selling doves, Get those doves out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. The disciples then remembered that the scriptures say, My love for your house burns in me like a fire. So it is this Jewish zealousness for ceremonial cleanliness made him do this. Sabi niya, hindi niyo dapat gagawin na bahay ng kalakal o nakawan itong aking bahay. Quoting from the Old Testament. Now we see a Jesus who is zealous and strict. Bakit doon sa mga nasa party, maluwag siya at itong mga nasa temple, bigla siyang nagalit? This time he is unaccommodating. Kahit sa marami, pwede na. Sa kanya, hindi. Pero yung mga sa iba na, huwag na lang sa kanya ibigay. Here we see the Lord being physical with His anger. Pinagtataob niya yung mga mesa. Kinalat niya yung mga barya. Yung kasing mga nagwa-worship sa Jerusalem, may mga dala silang pera from foreign countries kasi yung mga yun ang mga original na mga nagtatrabaho na ninirahan sa ibang bansa eh. Mga Jewish people. Nakakalat sila sa buong mundo. Pero pag may mga importanteng pista sa Jerusalem, umuwi sila sa Jerusalem as mga, sila mga original balikbayan. No? So, uuwi sila doon. Pero ang daladala nila mga pera, mga pera ng bansang pinanggalingan nila, ay syempre may mga mukha ng mga emperor yun, mga Diyos-Diyos doon sa mga bansang pinanggalingan nila. Hindi pwedeng tanggapin sa temple yun kasi may graven image. So, you need money changers. So, they would change their money into this kind of currency that was acceptable in the temple for their offering. Yung mga Jews doon, kahit nakatira sila sa ibang bansa, every year, nagdo-donate sila for the upkeep of the temple. Ngayon, marami doon sa mga money changers na ito nang daraya sa exchange rate. Kaya nagalit ang Panginoon. Pagkatapos, dapat nagdadala ka ng mga hayop na offering para sa mga kasalanan mo. Yung mga ibang may mga pera, doon na lang bumibili ng hayop sa temple door, sa courtyard, na wala yung hirap na daladala mo yung animal na isasacrifice mo. Na wala yung hirap nung katotohanan na nagkakasala ka. Natatanggal yung pain of having to make an offering because it had been made so convenient. So na offend si Lord doon. It's very Jewish. So we see here another, in fact the other side of Jesus, na marunong magalit, marunong magtaob ng mga mesa-mesa dyan. Righteous indignation, some theologians call that. Pag hindi ka na marunong magalit sa talagang mali, mali ka na. Dapat marunong ka magalit. Kaya nga kung minsan napapahamak ang buong bayan natin, hindi na tayo marunong magalit. Hindi ka na nagagalit sa mga kumakalbo ng mga bundok. Hindi ka na nagagalit sa nagtatapon sa ilog ng mga basura. Hindi ka na nagagalit sa nagpapark sa gitna ng kalsada. Tinatanggap mo na lang, mapapahamak ang buong lipunan pag hindi ka na marunong magalit sa mali. Pero hindi naman masaya yung lipunan na sobrang istrikto na, oh, huwag na ako, wala nang wine, tapos na, uwi na. So you see here that the Lord Jesus Christ was a complete person. The Jesus who would use miraculous powers to make wine for a party, now would whip people who were at the temple but were disrespectful of the temple's dignity. You see, and you begin to see the depth of the character of this person, the Lord. And guess who allowed such gross commerce in the temple? Yung mga religious authorities. Eh, may commission sila dun eh. Sa mga money changers na yun. May kita sila dun sa mga exchanges na nangyayari. Now, the Lord is definitely not two-dimensional. He's not a cardboard character as religion depicts Him to be. Very rich in personality. John 2.18, the Jewish leaders asked Jesus, What miracle will you work to show us why you have done this? Siyempre, nasyak sila. Sino to? Bakit niya biglang ginawa ang mga bagay na ito? Sabi niya, O sige, anong karapatan mo na gawin niyang ginawa mo? Patunayan mo. Maghimala ka. They were of course unaware of the first miracle that already happened. 19 to 21, Destroy this temple, Jesus answered, and in three days, I will build it again. The leaders replied, It took 46 years to build this temple. 
What makes you think you could rebuild it in three days? But Jesus was talking about his body as a temple. So here Jesus answered, although in a metaphor, one lesson we can learn at once is be sensitive to metaphors. Be sensitive to God's answers which need to be read correctly, even in Scripture. Marami tayong nababasa dyan, kailangan basahin mabuti para hindi mali ang pag-apply. Hindi maali yung pag-appropriate mo for your life. Paano mo malalaman na maganda yung reading mo? Tama ang yung hermeneutics, tama ang yung theology. Pagmagaan. Kasi sabi ni Lord, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Dapat magaan sa loob kahit kung isang mahirap sa katawan. Mahirap sundin in a physical way, but your spirit says, yes, it gives comfort to me. May test. Ang tamang reading ay hindi yung reading ko o reading mo, therefore tama. No, ang tamang reading, yung nagpapalaya, hindi yung nagkukulong. Yung nagpapagaan ng buhay, hindi yung nagpapabigat. Yung nagpapayaman, hindi yung nagpapahirap. Kasi sa amin ni Lord, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Marami kasi mahilig na ang reading nila, yung mahirap, yung nakakapagpasikip, yung nakakapagpalungkot, yung nakakapagpadugo. Laging ganun ang tendency ng reading nila sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Kaya tuloy nagmumukha ang Panginoong Yesus na, ano, hindi mabait, hindi mabuti. Nami-misrepresent. Verse 22, And when He was raised from death, His disciples remembered what He had told them. Then they believed the scriptures and the words of Jesus. Reflection is necessary and fruitful. Lagi mong inaalala ang mga salita sa Bible, ina-apply mo. Tinitingnan mo yung mga nakaraan kung paano mo ina-apply, tama ba o mali. Iniisip mo yung darating pa at pinag-iisipan mo kung paano ito i-apply. Because God gives us intelligence and God gives us guidance. Bagamat yung word of the Bible is addressed to all of us, may kanika niya yan na pag-apply. Aangkinin mo yung reading na para sa'yo. Walang reading na para sa lahat, isang reading lang. Tulad ng walang mga fingerprints na magkakamuka. Dapat personal sa'yo ang dating ng salita ng Diyos. Ni ginawa niya tayong mga individuals. John 2, 23. In Jerusalem during Passover, many people put their faith in Jesus because they saw Him work miracles. So pagkatapos noon, nagkaroon pa siya ng mga miraculous uh, deeds and many people believed in Him. So Jesus performed miracles in Jerusalem. 24 to 25. But Jesus knew what was in their hearts and He would not let them have power over Him. What was in their hearts? The people who wanted to make Jesus their king. Marami kasi ang inaakala nila, ang darating na Messiah, ang reading nila doon is a political, military savior that would save them from any oppressing country. This time, Rome. Rome was oppressing them at that time. So ang tingin nila, ang darating na ina-expect na Messiah was a political one. Kaya na-alarm din si Herod, remember, nung ipinanganak si Jesus, pinapatay niya yung mga bata. Kasi kung political yun, paano siya? Eh, siya yung reigning king. Mapapalitan siya. Many people thought it was political. So sabi dito, Jesus would not let him power over, them power over him. Hindi siya magpapadala sa political agenda ng mga tao. Hindi siya magpapagamit para sa ibang agenda. His agenda was a heavenly one. So that people can have salvation and know God and have eternal life, but also have a full life here on earth. Hindi lang pang eternity, pang dito rin. That's why both sides ang pagtingin mo dapat sa Panginoon at maging sa reliyon. Verse 25, no one had to tell him what people were like. He already knew. And that's our last verse for today. But that's everything. He knew people. Now he knows people. He knows you. And if He knows you, that should be a lot of comfort. Hindi lang tayo kilala ng Panginoon, kilala niya tayo para niya tayo mahalin, para niya tayo tulungan, para buuin ang sira, para punuin ang kulang, para ituwid ang liko, para liwanagan ang madilim, para pasarapin ang mapait, para pasayahin ang malungkot, para pagliwanagin ang nadidimla natin mga isip. Jesus cares. He understands. It's important to understand Him and to look at Jesus both sides. So ang tanong, 
Who is Jesus to you? What is Jesus to you? Siya ba yung mahigpit na ipinapakita ng relihiyon na pagkagumawa ka ng mali, papatamaan ka niya ng kidlat, luto ka? Siya ba yung nag-iintay laging magkamali ka at kinukwenta yung mga points mo, negative and positive? Or is he the kind, loving Savior who would produce wine for your little party in some little corner of the world because he cares for you? How much do we appreciate that personal love and care of Jesus that we carry so much burden sa mata lang sinabi niya, cast all your burdens on me. Cast your cares upon me, those who are heavy laden. Kita niyo si Mary, nagwo-worry. Wala nang wine, ako wala nang wine. Paano yan? Niya, Ay, bakit nga pala ako mag-aalala? Nandito itong Jesus. Sabi niya, wala na silang wine. Sabi niya, Mother, don't tell me what to do. It's not yet time. Sabi niya, sa mga katulong, gawin niyo ipapagawa niya. This will be solved. Anong inaalala mong sobra? Why don't you cast it on Jesus? Pero hindi siya magician. Pinaigib niya yung mga tao ng tubig. Hindi yung empty jars ay biglang tumihaya kasi nakataob na yung mga jars eh. Ginamit sa ceremonial washing ng mga tao kumatay ng party. Siguro pinanghuga sila ng paan, mga kamay nila, whatever. Pero nakataob na lahat yung mga tapayan. Sabi niya, fill them with water. What did they have to do? They had to go out from that house, fetch water from a well, which was difficult to do, and it was a lot of water. Hindi naman biglang toink may wine. Umigib ka, lagyan mo ng tubig, and then ask God to turn it into wine. So may exam ka, pag-aralan mo, mag-aral ka, and then ask God to bless you, na pumasa ka, kundi man mag-top. Pero yung wala kang ginagawa, tapos Lord, papasahin mo po ako. Magic yung kailangan mo, hindi miracle. And God is not a magician. Ayusin niyo po ang samahan namin mag-asawa, tapos lagi kang gabi umuwi. Di ba? Ayusin niyo po ang aming samahan, tapos pa, lagi ka dyang nakasigaw. Lord, pagandahin niyo po ang relationship namin ng parents ko, tapos ikaw naman dyan, hindi mo ginagawa yung dapat mong gawin. Seven years ka na sa high school. Di ba? So, paano aayos? Fill your jar with water. Do what you must. Pray tayo ng pray. Kaya kung minsan yung mga, pag-pray natin ng Pilipinas, o lahat mag-pray ng Pilipinas, pero sa pag-alis yung mga nag-pray na isang katerbang born again Christian, ang daming kalat. Bakit pa kayo nagkita-kita para magkalat lang dito? Fill your jars with water. Gusto mong ayusin ang Pilipinas? Magsimula ka, huwag magkalat dyan. Conserve energy. Magtanim ka ng halaman. Huwag ka magsayang ng kuryente. Kahit hindi ka mag-pray, aayos yun. Because your action is prayer by itself. Pero yung pray ka ng pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, tapos wala ka namang ginagawa, kaartihan yun. Hindi yun prayer. Fill your jars with water. Gusto yung umayos sa inyong buhay, ang inyong pamilya, ang inyong kumpanya, gusto mo umulad ang buhay, magkaroon ka ng kayamanan, do what you must. Then ask God to bless what you've already done. Kailangan magparami. Katulad nung pinakain ni Lord yung libu-libu mga tao, hindi naman siya nag-magic from nothing. May bata nagbigay ng dalawang maliliit niyang isda at saka konting tinapay. Pinarami. Pero may nagbigay muna. Laging may gagawin ka muna. Tapos ipapabless mo kay Lord. May event. Magpaplano kang mabuti. Tapos ipapabless mo. Hindi wala kang kaplano-plano. Tapos, oh, spirit-led na lang tayo. Magkakagulo yun. Ang dami nating misconception about how God works. But look at Jesus. He blesses, but He makes you work. That's why we have said, servants are the ones who discover Jesus first. Kaya dapat madiscover natin din yun. Ano ang mga kailangan natin sa buhay? Ano yung mga empty jars? Ano yung mga wala ng wine? Ilapit natin sa Panginoon. Ama namin sa langit. Salamat sa pagkat sa pamamagitan ng anak niyo si Jesus. Naging flesh and blood, naging totoong totoo, real, three-dimensional sa buhay namin mga human beings, yung inyong divinity. We thank you Lord that through Jesus you have revealed your full divinity to us. We pray that we may have a deeper understanding of the ministry, the person, and the saving work of Jesus. Na hindi lang salvation from hell unto heaven. 
kundi salvation din sa mga pang-araw-araw namin, mga pangangailangan, kagipitan at mga kakulangan. That we can go to Jesus even for the things that people might consider small or too small because nothing is too small for Him. We thank you, Lord, na kung gano'n man kaliit ang mga pinoproblema namin, hindi minamaliit ng iyong anak na si Jesus. And we bring to you our lives. Kung anong mga kulang namin, Lord, we fill our jars with water and ask you to turn it into wine. Magbulay-bulay tayo sumandali ng katahimikan. Ang kinin ninyo, ang personal lesson from this wonderful story and the presentation of the Lord Jesus, both sides. Lord, in silence, touch our hearts. Teach us to apportion for ourselves what you have prepared for us in this spiritual meal. And may we be nourished, may we be strengthened, healed, and empowered. Let's be silent before the Lord and let the, fin let the message be finished by the Lord and let the Spirit give us the capacity to apply this in our daily lives.